Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. In this video, we're going to look at a massive 31 by 16 foot layout design. We're going to briefly talk about the origins, the line diagram and operations of the layout. And then we're going to dive straight into the space available and the design itself. I got an email from a client who saw my three part mini series from town to railroad to a layout where I analyze a branch line, the branch line from Cotrain to Monsoni, and I analyze it and make a, a layout design from that. And he basically wrote that he wanted a layout based on what I did there. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry, after this video, I'll send a link to that series. The changes I had to include, first off, he wants it in end scale as well, but he wants to use Kato Unitrack. He wants to use the turnouts at number six where possible, especially on the main line. And he wants a double track main line, which is actually a massive change because the branch is mostly single track with some sidings. And everything had to be on a single deck. So he better have some space because previous design had three decks. And he also doesn't want any gradients. So comes the good news, he does have a massive space of 31 feet by 16 feet to his disposal. So as we are basically reusing the line from the previous video, let's just go over that in a nutshell. So on the right hand side, we have Cotrain. That's where the branch line starts. And basically the main line comes here from the east, goes through Cotrain and then goes to the west. We're not modeling the main line, we're modeling the branch. So instead of going to the west, we continue the journey all the way to Monsoni. Now there are some key features on that line. The island Falls there, Fraser Dale's there, there's a lumber yard at Otter Rapids. Please see the video series after this and you'll understand all of that. And we also talk in that video about the traffic, different types of traffic. So it's mostly going to be the same. So we have two groups of traffic. That's uh, trains that are running on the main line and are passing by co train. Some is just through traffic and some will stop to, to pick up passengers or freight cars. And then we have traffic that originates from co train because co train does have a terminal. This can be anything from a local a small transfer run to the transfer line here in Fraserdale, passenger local, uh, the Munsuni turn, all of that. Now the client did want a few more features on his layout. So here's the line diagram again, but stretched out a little bit. Uh, he likes waters and rivers a lot. So first thing I added here is a trestle between Cotrain and Fraserdale, and also an extra stop here at Gardiner, or Gardiner, how do you pronounce that? Um, there are a lot of trestles on this branch, so it makes perfectly uh, sense to add a, a trestle right here. And then later on, after uh, Otter Rapids, if you look at the prototype as well, the track actually runs alongside the river for quite a long stretch. So that's just what I illustrated here with this blue line. It's going to follow the river. Then we have, this is a new feature. Uh, before you cross a massive bridge here at Moose River, there is some kind of maintenance away stop and, and siding there. Looks a bit rustic, um, which is quite nice. I want to add that. And then we dive into Mosuni. So if you put this in a diagram, the entire layout looks something like this. It's basically, as you see, this is a giant loop, this black line. And then with this red line, that's the staging. So just off the co-train, you can dive into the staging and you can do a loop and then come into co-train on the other side, the west side. So this represents the main line. And then after Mosuni, as you see, you can either continue straight to co-train again, connecting um, the loop so you can run in circles, or you can dive in here into staging just like that. And because we have this one little connection right here where my mouse is, we can actually turn the trains around. So that might be a very useful feature as well. So now onto the room. This is a 31 feet by 16 feet and is actually on top of a garage. Garage doors are here on the south and here you see a lot of windows drawn in. Doors here on the right and that's more or less it. There used to be a two, um, two room apartment in here with a kitchen and yada yada. We took all that out. So if we look at the rulers, there's some features he wanted. He wanted a, a workspace down below near the window. He also wanted a seating area here. I just drew into two uh, couches just like that. And um, the kitchen is here in the corner as well. That's where the plumbing is. So there's a few ways you can go. We have a massive space like this. You can go around the wall or some kind of walk-in. The client didn't want a duck under at any cost. So we actually quickly came up with the island concept because this is such a nice uh, space that an island would fit very well. So this is uh, the end shape that we came up, a giant U. You can also make an E shape where you have legs right here and then one in the middle and then one to the right. But that's not an efficient shape because you only have one long stretch. If you have a U shape like this, then that would be uh, the most amount of straight track you can get. 
So that's exactly what we want. And then we have a two feet deep bench work. So two feet here on the north side and two feet here on the south side. And this blue line right here is the uh, center divider wall to chop up the entire layout into two stretches, one of the inner loop and one of the outer loop, so to speak. So once you've determined this, then the question is, how are you going to place all these different features on your layout? It's basically one giant string and somehow you need to get that string on the layout in such a manner that makes sense. So one um, solution that could work is to put Cotrain here in the south. This is the main sitting area here. So we do want Cotrain there because it's going to be the main feature of the layout. And then have the staging immediately uh, behind it as you do have the main line from Cotrain going through Cotrain. So you want to be able to dive in and out of that staging as efficiently as you can. And then just following the line diagram, you have a trestle scene, perhaps here in, in the band, Fraserdale in this section, uh, Auto Rapids here in this section, maybe making use of this um, the bend right here, the 180, the space there. Then the, the massive bridge scene and Moussini here, maybe going around the bend or something like that. So in the end, we, we settled on, on this idea. Cotrain here, staging there, Moussini on the other side, and then the other features we just follow in a string, just like that. Let's have a look at the layout. Here we go. Let me just turn the rulers off, the track on, and the scenery on, and we're just going to dive through it. As you see, there's a lot to see, and it's quite busy. So I actually made a layer just to hide part of the layout so we don't get confused. So there's a lot to see, so let's just get started. The main line would run from here all the way to here. So let's just straight through the entire scene. <clears throat> and we're just going to chop it up in sections. It's not that complicated. It looks like a lot of track, but it's not. Let's just zoom in. Let's just start with the yard. Here we come off from the main line and then we have the yard is right here. And we have one, two, three, four, five tracks just right there. And then behind the yard is the engine terminal. That's this whole facility in this dark gray section. So it connects conveniently to the yard just right here. Just looking more at the terminal as well. It connects back from the other side here through this track right there. And this is a fueling track right there. And there's a very iconical scene in the prototype. We have two tracks, just one here and one there. And in between these two tracks is a road. So that is also modeled right here. I think that's a very nice scene. The road leads to this facility here, and this is for the passenger rail cars. Because remember, trains uh, originate from Cotrain and then go to Monsigny. And of course, there's, I think, the Polar Bear Express and some other passenger trains. So these cars can go and be uh, stored here, serviced here, and repaired here in this facility right there. Now, if we move on, here is a storage slash warehouse facility with two tracks. That's there in the prototype as well. So it's this roundabout <laughs> just before you exit uh, Cotrain. Passenger station is here in the north. This section of track with the turnouts is all prototypical as well, just with the sections where they are and the locations. We actually go through all these turnouts in the first video of the series. So do have a look after this video. It's quite interesting, I believe. So that covers the south side of the track. Let's go to the north side. And north side, we have two areas. First, we have this section here with two tracks, and this is a team track area where cars can be spotted and be offloaded into cars cars, trucks, anything uh, of that nature. And then everything after this turnout is a wood processing. So at the far end, if we follow the track, all the raw materials are processed. So the logs come in and then it's cut into planks and that lumber can be uh, loaded and offloaded on these tracks just right here. And then the section here on the right is actually where, where engineered wood is made. So we take your, your scraps, your sawdust and your bigger pieces and you make them into OSB board or MDF or, or stuff like that. So that's what this facility is here on the right. And that was Cotrain, nothing more, nothing less. So let's continue here. We exit Cotrain, we make this 180 bend and then we come into the inner side of the U. So here we have the beer shop. That's also pretty typical, the world famous beer shop. Have a look at that. Bit of a joke, but it's it's interesting to have that on your layout. And in this section of the track, actually not a lot happens. It's one straight shoot past staging. And here is the uh, stop of Gardinet. Do note we have one cross over here and we'll talk about that a bit later. Let's get to get into the staging and we have one cross over here. So this staging is a scenic staging. I think it's so massive. It's nice to see it to have all your trains parked there. So the staging is there and then we will continue the exit staging uh, from this side. We'll talk about that in a bit. 
sticking to the main line. So Garnet is here. This is a very small stop. So not all trains will stop here. And then we go around the bend and across this trestle. And I really tried my best where I could to, to cut these straight sections of track. So here as well, instead of making two 90 degree turns, there's one 90 degree turn here. And then I, I cut the turn. Um, it's all super elevated, the, the super elevated double track pieces as you see right here. Um, but I cut it into two pieces and put the trestle right there. And the same here on the right with Auto Rapids. I, I tried to cut um, this long stretch section of the track as well, I made a little zigzag. And the zigzag is there in the prototype as well. First, before Auto Rapids, we get Fraserdale. This is basically an interchange on a layout. So if we zoom in, we have one, two tracks right here, and this uh, south uh, mainline track as well. These are connected to team tracks. So cars just be parked here and loaded and offloaded on the spot. You can use this one as a team track as well. And because there's an interchange uh, that actually leads here off layout, cars will be spotted and picked up from these two tracks as well. Now, just to give a little nod to the actual purpose of Fraserdale, I believe it was uh, initially built to, to build a dam in an electrical uh, power station next to it. So just to give a little nod, I did add one track. It goes all the way here where you can still offload some very heavy, heavy transformer items and stuff like that. So see it as an industry, um, although it's a power station. Now, if we continue down the line, here we have Auto Rapids slash uh, Lumberyard. So the main line is this one right here, just like that. And then we have one runaround section of track. Any of that because you have a trailing and a facing point being this one right here. And then here it goes into these tracks where you can load logs and trailing point right here depending for the direction you come um, for some more switching activity. And then we go around the bend. And if we got the diagram again, this is the part of the layout where the track goes uh, parallel to a river. And then we cross it to the most river right here. So that's what I tried to, to mimic here. So we got the river that goes parallel to the track, winds around, and then the track crosses the river with this massive bridge. Um, that's pretty typical as well. Here we have a little, I think, a maintenance of way section, perhaps a little a station. But you can also spot a car or two just for some uh, team track offloading. And then we dive into Musoni. Musoni is quite an interesting location in the prototype because it has so much to offer. I actually split it up in this uh, layout. So we have the main yard and station here. That's uh, the, the first section. And then as the line officially ends, this is more of an industrial slash uh, switching area. So we have here is a, um, a offloading ramp for, for your uh, TOFCs, for example. And then we have two lines that go to the city. Um, the, the bottom one goes to the port and is possibly industry uh, connected here as well. And the north one also connects to some industries. This is all port typical in some manner or fashion. It's just not in this form because we just don't have the linear space. And then here is a oil offloading facility. So there's so much that this design has to offer. Now, if you see after uh, Musoni, it looks to be a double, a double main line right here, but it's actually not. It is double line for a bit, but then the line on the left connects to complete the loop. So in the operations, this would not exist, the section of track from here to here, but for our layout, it does. So they could have continuous running. And then if I turn the inner loop on again, without getting confused, the track here, the double track uh, line coming from Mosoni, the right one that dives into staging. It's not really in the operations a, a purpose for this. One benefit is if you take this line, you can go through staging, make a 180, go through co-train, and then come back on the left track. And then you basically uh, turned your train around, which is a big benefit. And this track right here, we didn't discuss it as well, but it, it speaks for itself. This is the line that the train would take coming from co-train, diving into the staging just like that. So there are a few more things we need to discuss. We're almost there, but we need to talk a bit about the crossovers. So as you see, the, the client wanted a double track mainline. So I gave that all the way uh, uh, on the main line. So from co-train all the way to Musuni is double track. This connection is not double track mainline, just to give a little bit more of operational interest if you would just run trains around in a circle. In co-train, there's ample opportunity to cross from the inner line to the other line. There's one cross over here, and this is to dive into the staging and out to the staging. And there's another cross over on this section. And this creates this long section of track here where a train can be on hold as the weight 
for uh, oncoming traffic, or you can use it to, to make way for a train that stopped here at the uh, Garden A station. Now, if we follow the line, there's another uh, crossover right here. So again, the distance between this uh, easily covers the maximum train length, so a train can, can be uh, held on this section of track. The purpose of this double crossover is to get your train as pre-sorted to either a Fraser Dale, so if you're on the track on the north, you need to go to the track on the south, or to the lumberyard. So if you're on the track to the south, then you need to go to the track to the north, because that's where the lumberyard is. And the double crossover on this side has the same function, purpose, but in the other direction. Now after this double crossover here, we follow the river and there is no crossover anymore until we get to Moussoni. And this double crossover is actually part of the R throat. That is the, 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 the big concept behind the entire main line. So wow, what a layout this is. If you want to learn more about the prototype and go into detail of this track plan, then check out the video here on the left. Special thanks to the client. It was a very enjoyable journey uh, to come to this uh, layout. Thank you all for watching. It's all for today. Bye bye.